So brand new vlog starting. What we're going to do is how to start a brand, mistakes to avoid, stuff I wish I knew when I first started, what not to do, what to do, stuff to focus on. And yeah, even from down to the brand name to where we're at today. So let's give it a go. Yeah, so a lot of people always say to me, where did you start and how did you start and how did you come up with the brand name? But first and foremost, before your brand name, you need a niche in the basically a gap in the market so for us we started with luxury denim at an affordable price but if i was to start again i feel like a massive mistake that we made was doing a range of sizes and ever since we brought out the products of a one size fits all sunglasses aftershaves bags i feel like that's a perfect gap to start with so i feel like if you can find a one size fits all product and you can actually add value in that department to the consumer. I definitely, if I was to start all over again, I would definitely look into that. So you said about one-size products. What do you mean by one-size products? So one-size products, as I touched on before, is kind of, you don't need sizing. So for example, t-shirts, jeans, you need waist size, you need length, t-shirts, you need size, and they will go up a size, they will go down a size. Especially if you're starting online, it's a difficult market to take off. With your one size fits all products, as in your bags, your aftershaves, your smells, your card holders, your wallets, for example, socks, boxes, kind of like a one size fits all where you don't need to send back because of the sizing. And I think that's a great avenue because accessories nowadays, if you look on top end websites, and I'm speaking from my behalf, but it's luxury affordable fashion. If you look on websites such as Flannels, Selfridges, you're paying for bags, aftershaves that start at three, four, five hundred pounds and sometimes range up to two and a half thousand pounds. So there's a gap in that market for us to hit that high end luxury affordable look but at an affordable price. So obviously you're just affordable menswear. Where should other people look where, where should they go to find the gap in the product? I think find a gap in the market. I think a lot of people nowadays are wearing like gym wear. I think since COVID and stuff, gym wear and like obviously I know Adenola are big at the moment especially in liverpool where they've kind of found their own lane where it's not nike under armor it's kind of a luxury it's a luxury fashion basically at an affordable price you're not paying two three four hundred pounds for gym sets you're kind of paying that middle market and i think they've really nailed down and that's just one example you could go on and look at how other companies are doing or how other firms are doing and there's always a niche that they find I think you could probably do a little bit of both. I think the main reason why you're looking for manufacturers is trustworthy, reliable, and as well, minimum quantity orders. Minimum quantity orders is if, for example, you're starting off with a t-shirt or a hoodie brand, your minimum quantity order, you might have to order a hundred or a thousand. So if you can kind of, if you can find a manufacturer that does maybe 25 to 50 and start off, but even going on to the manufacturing side, I think if you're going to do printed hoodies, or t-shirts i think as well you need to be looking at minimum quantity orders on plain hoodies and t-shirts in where you can kind of print on demand so print on demand means if you've got a design in place for the t-shirts or hoodie which is how we started i'm only speaking from experience is if you had a design but i don't you know if people are going to like it you can ask about and a lot of friends and family will say they do like it but would they buy it that's another question so by printing on demand, which means you've got plain hoodies and you don't, as you sell a hoodie with that print on, you can print it, you can send it to the printers and then send it out or sell it to a friend, sell it to a family. So basically the benefit of that is not being left with a hundred printed items, which could be kind of dead stock that's not selling and you can't overprint on that garment hoodie. A lot of people always come to me and the first question they'll ask is how did you decide the name and the name we decided sitting on the couch literally it just depends where your surroundings are obviously we're based in liverpool so tribal and community for us is a massive factor it's like the tribal the tribalism when you look deeper into the name but it doesn't always have to be deep thought i've seen a lot of brands that just start off with a second name or a first name it, don't spend weeks and weeks and weeks thinking about your name because if you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can always change your name down the line. It doesn't matter. 